Think I flew about five RVs in two days. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Pretty cool. I gotta say, I think the 14 is still my favorite. I think I just like the 14 for the pure flying and the tailwheel, but this is an awesome machine. And I also had my first stab at learning how to build these things. We're gonna uh, admit defeat here. <laughs> I'm failing the I'm safe checklist for riveting. And I, I can just tell, like, I'm like barely on board. I flew three and a half hours probably today, plus filming. In this episode, I test flew three of the van's lineup in one day, comparing the RV7A, RV14, and RV14A. I also got to chat with the man himself, Van, and started learning the art of building one of these aircraft. And that was only the beginning. Today, I'll be comparing the top of the line four place RV10 and the smallest two-place option in the van's family, the RV-12. After showing company president Mitch the 20-year-old photo of an RV-7 that I've been carrying around, he offered up a factory tour. This is the corporate headquarters of Vans Aircraft. This is the heartbeat of the company. This is the engineering department in Vans. This is our receiving department. Lots to get to, so let's start flying. Up first is the RV-10. So this here is the Vans Aircraft RV-10. It's our four-place airplane that went in the market around 2002 or so. This airplane here is like flying just a larger RV-14. It's a little bit heavier on the controls. You got a constant speed prop, a very roomy cabin, by far the best four-place airplane I think that's ever been built. It has about a 220 mile an hour cruise speed. Very nice to fly and it'll haul four full-size people. All right, let's go fly. All right, let's do it. Clear. Experiment on 410 RV, I think Terry Elroy, ground runway 35, taxi the Alpha. 35 Alpha for 410 RV. Okay, we're going to just start with the flight controls. All clear. Instruments, we need 200 feet. This here has a three degrees up, just like the RV-14, so one click down on the flaps will be for takeoff. This episode assumes that you've seen part one, and with all Flight Chops episodes, it's edited for time. So it'll be the same as the 14A, just pick up the nose and then keep it up hovering. That's it. Okay, line us all up, a little power and get us rolling, and bring that power all the way home. It's a powerhouse. Okay, and now the back pressure, lift that nose up. A little forward pressure, keep the nose low. Away we go. Twenty-five square? Yeah, twenty-five square. And you can start left turn out any time we'll be left turn to two two zero. A little more hazy now than it was earlier. Yeah, it's afternoon. So I can't train to fly home builds? without learning about building. One of the tools that we use extensively in sheet metal aircraft construction and repair is called a Cleco. It was developed during World War II for mass aircraft production. So this is basically a temporary placeholder rivet? It's, it's something you can use as a tool so that you can keep holes lined up for the actual assembly and riveting process. I'm not gonna lie, this was all pretty intimidating, but there are options for new builders. Well, our quick build options, we essentially have the wings are completed for you and fuselages are essentially completed for you. This is where the value in aviation is now. Typically speaking, a quick build kit will save you at least one third of the construction time. Most of the spars that we build, we manufacture all the parts here. But uh, for most of our models, we have them assembled by, uh, by a local vendor, with the exception of two spars for our RV-12 and our RV-14. They are manufactured and they are assembled here. Even over here, we see Kevin who's cutting some tube, probably for engine mounts. We do still do some things that are pretty pedestrian, but those days are coming to an end. I have plans to modernize this manufacturing facility, bring more in-house. We'll pick up a bit more of the tour later. 
for now, it's time to meet the competitor, the RV-12, the lightest two-place airplane in the fleet. So this is the RV-12 with the 912, the Rotax 912 IS engine, the fuel injected engine, 20 gallons of gas on board, has removable wings. So this is our light sport entry into the LSA market. It's still light on the controls, but it's, you know, like what, 1,400 pounds? One thing's for sure, these little Rotax engines start up super easy. The throttle's down here, it's just basically a console song throttle. And of course it's a brake steer lot because it's full capturing nose wheel. And it is a tow brake, yeah. Uh huh, it's a tow brake. I'd never flown a Rotax before we got this, but it's quite a nice flying little airplane really. One of the things about it is it doesn't have, you know, maybe the rudder authority that the 7A has. Uh -huh. So therefore you end up relying more on the brakes to do the steering than the rudder. So the immediate difference I can see is the sling has a little handle for brakes, whereas uh -huh. this is the tow brakes, which is more intuitive. Otherwise it is definitely the direct sort of match of the sling setup. A previous episode covered my first checkout flight in the Sling 2, which is a very similar airplane. Check that one out if you've missed it. So I do this just like the 7. One thing about it is, of course, it's a lot lighter than the other airplane, and the control pressures are undoubtedly lighter than the 14. Yeah. Do the same thing, just get the nose off, hold it off. Uh-huh, as soon as you have power, and just pick the nose on up. OK, you ready to go? Yep, ready to go. It's all right, look out for 826, let me fly. Let's just wake up the neutral, bring the power in. Let it come on up to the neutral. All right, now bring the power in all the way. Push it all the way in, everything you got. Now a little back pressure, lift your nose up. Three mile final. And then not too high, keep it forward. Right there? There you go, looks good. Do you see why I don't want you to have the stick all the way back? Yeah. I mean, it'll pop up before you even get the power in. Okay. 75 knots is actually the best rate of climb speed. Do we pull it back at all for climb power or just leave no, it? No, just leave it full power. With both planes in the air, it's time to start the comparison. What kind of speed do you expect to stabilize at? 140 or 150? Probably 145, 150 knots. And I think seeing the RV-10 hit the market kind of blew my mind because seeing an airplane that was that big and that capable as a home built we knew that a four-place airplane was going to be a big challenge to build. The market evolved and the used airplanes got more used. There became more of a demand for a new four-seat airplane. And our kits evolved to the point that they were more complete and easier to build. So now it was practical to think of building a four-place airplane. So all of these factors kind of merged at the same time. We developed it and marketed it and it's been successful. We don't see any end in sight for the demand for that airplane. All right, so we're going to do a couple of sea turns. Clear left. And just like in part one, we set up a sort of test mission profile for each airplane. Overall, both planes had great feel and no surprises. Clear, clear right, we'll go the other way. All right, clear on the right. Handling is really sporty and tight at cruise speeds, but slow flight characteristics are an important thing to look at. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring it into slow flight, so power all the way back. Once the power is back, put prop in. Flap speed 85 knots. Okay, step flaps all the way down. All right, bring through there, we'll just stay at 60 knots. Okay, bring it back around 180. All right, we're clear. Okay, let's do a power off stall. Okay, so pitch the nose forward first a little. A little more, a little more. Now pull the power to idle. So we'll do the stall, we'll do a full power recovery into a climb. Okay, power. All in. Yeah, it's a real docile plane, very smooth. It is a very, very nice flying airplane. Yeah, this one seems like it's fat, but it still flies like a slippery, like uh -huh. the rest of them. Yeah. So what do you think? Yeah, it's definitely not quite as much oomph, but it's still got some good feel. You know when you compare it like to a Cessna 150, you know, it gets off a lot shorter. And oh, I wouldn't even compare it to 150. It just runs off and leaves it really. So let's come back to about a 220 heading. I'll put the pointer up there for it. All right, so you know the drill. We can do some drill. turns here. Check her out. I used the opportunity speaking to Van to ask him about his test pilot days. 
Most of the first flights have been pretty uneventful other than minor details. So uh, again, don't have any Chuck Yeager stories to tell there. Right, so I guess an unexciting test flight is what you want. Exactly. I've flown a lot of little other ultralight type airplanes. Not that this is an ultralight, but I just think this is a pretty fine fine little airplane. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Nice balance and pretty good baggage area too. It does. Flap speed in this little airplane is uh, 86 knots. All right, just bring the flaps all the way down. Got it. All right, they're down. Let's slow it on down to 50 knots, see how it feels. Look at that. Clear on the left. It hung in there at 50, no problem with good control authority. Right. Stalls are coming up next, but I just want to interrupt real quick to say we've got an awesome giveaway and it's to help out grow Van's Instagram up so they can have swipe ups in their stories. And I thought giving away a Bose A20 over the holidays would be a fun way to do it. There's instructions on how to win at flightchops.com. Power back to idle, set up for the stall. Let's we'll do the stall with full power recovery into a climb. That's it, eh? That's it. That's all you get. All the way in with your pull power. Bring the flaps up. Back in the factory, Mitch is showing off some of the tech. On the heart of our manufacturing process, we have the Trump Trumatic 200 and a Trump Trumatic 2020. The 200 is about 25 years old. This machine right here is about 15 years old. And we'll go over there and we can take a look. Now we'll take a flat piece of metal, flat piece of aluminum, and cut out any shape, any size. All the rivet holes get here within, you know, within like ten thousandths or hundred thousandths of an inch accuracy. This is where this is where our airframes really come together, is the accuracy of these of these particular machines. But there's no avoiding the hands-on work to build. This one looks harder to deal with because of like placing it. Yep. So you kinda... There are other types of rivet squeezers. These are what we call hand rivet squeezers. It's muscle power to do it. There's also hammery ones. Okay. All right. And air gunny ones. Square it up in the reflection and just count 1,000, 1,002. Not enough. That was 1,001. Clearly I have a lot to learn. Anyway, let's get back to landings. External zero Romeo Victor, proceed direct numbers straight in. Follow zero Romeo Victor, proceed direct. External zero Romeo Victor, maintain maximum forward speed, number one, runway 35, clear to look at touch and go. Follow zero Romeo Victor, keep speed up. That first click of flaps down, so you can click it down to zero. Oh, so just one? Yep, one click. Terminal zero Romeo Victor, on the go, make left close traffic. Wind 3005. Left close traffic for 10 RB. Okay, one more notch. Okay, go ahead. Now, we're, we're going to slow down now to 75 knots. Make yeah, sure you trim it all up. Zoom on navigation. Up for on the approach frequency. Remember to put the center line on the left okay, side. Okay, the the center, uh, the left side. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. There you go. That looks good. Okay, now bring your power to idle. Down to real close. All the way to idle. Pull all the way back. Now stick to neutral. Number two, so we're ready to roll. Now here we go. Final. The long straight in finals that we were being given on these flights made it a little challenging to plan the pattern, uh, especially landing a new type for the first time. Yeah, it's a little hectic there, but we got yeah, it. We got it. I get like half laps in. Uh, if you got 86 knots, almost. Right there. Okay, go ahead. And it'll be a full flap landing, yeah? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you'll have the flaps all the way down. And then you'll have to hold the nose up level to get to slow down. It's a real slick, clean airplane. Make sure the power's all the way off. And then once you get down to 60, maybe just 2,500. That's not hard to get. Power pipe by by the Lima Whiskey ready to go here now. Fire the thermal 7 Victor Alpha on the go. Extend up wind. I'll call your crosswind turn. Expect uh, right traffic. Well, you spend great traffic, you stand up until you call 7 
SATF Oxford, runway 35, clear, touch and go, traffic short, final no factor. Make sure the power's all the way off now. Eight two five, clear land or clear for touch and go, runway 35. Down closer. Right, right, right. Four right, 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 three six two four. There you go. Hold that right, right. Three six two four. And then just bring your power in. We'll just do a go around. Go ahead, and bring your power all in. There you go. I was aiming down the spinner too much, so I was... Uh, yeah, so make sure you put that runway right there in a side-by-side -side airplane. Yep, that'll put you in the center. And I'm still struggling with lining up because, honestly, I've been flying tandem a lot lately, so I'm not used to side-by-side -side aircraft. Contact ground. Fish ship capture 75. Make sure you're all trimmed up. I really like having the flaps on the panel. I think that's a... Yeah, that's a good option. It is. Have the trim on the stick and flaps on the panel. Final's clear. Looking pretty good. Fortune RV final, 3-5, full stop landing. Well, not for the visual, 3-5. Experimental zero runway, Victor, runway 3-5, clear to land. Clear to land. Fortune RV. Southeast 41, Golf Alpha, Aurora Tower, straight in, runway 3-5, number 2, follow RV, short final, runway 3-5, clear to land. Okay, number 2, looking for the RV for 3-5, uh, clear to land for 4 Golf Alpha. Oh, this is Caroline, but not so bad. We're touchdown. I'm good to call that good if you want to call that good. Fire into brakes. Flaps to full. Bring the power all the way to idle. This thing's a real floater, so a little bit of extra energy and you'll float all the way up the runway. 317 Victor Alpha, we'd like full stop landing. Extreme 07 Victor Alpha, runway 35, clear to land number one. 35, clear to land, 78. Find brakes. I felt like in the uh, 14 I got it okay. I don't know if it's because the bump of the spinner was causing more of an illusion to this one. Could be. Or it could be it's just the first time you've been in this airplane. Yeah, <laughs> could be that too. So thanks again to Vans for inviting me out to do this one. And of course, thanks to sponsors and Patreon supporters for allowing us to keep doing this. And in this case, Bose is giving us an A20 to give away. And all you really need to do is follow Vans' Instagram feed and lots of cool stuff happens there anyways. So hopefully a lot of you go and do that and get a chance to win the A20. And uh, we're definitely considering getting an RV14 to document the build process. So please let me know if you want to follow that because that's part of what's helping me decide. Until next time, keep your flight chop sharp. So we got about, so this is what we tried to do. We thought we would make this. And we got it about 40% done. You're over. You're over 50%. Yeah, so I felt like I had to aim a lot more right in this one for some reason. I don't know if it's because the bumpy uh, yeah, spinner so creates an illusion. You were definitely having a little bit of a lineup problem, so you're touching down a little bit of a crab, and also on that left side a little bit. Whenever you fly in a side-by-side -side airplane, pretend you're in a tandem airplane, and the center line goes right here just like you would yeah. in a tandem. Forget about the center of yeah. the nose.